Hello world, I'm just here to make you think. I'm on Bro and C Be More on Temple Campus, coming through North Philly, walking down Broad Street. And I'm making this video because shortly I'm gonna be going live a lot or making videos a lot on you know in Philly. So you got people that make videos in Philly and all that, but what they don't do, they don't give it to you raw like me, and raw like um, a few other channels that's on here, that's on YouTube, like the real Philly TV, you feel me, and a bunch of other YouTubers and bloggers, but as you see, it's a nice day, Saturday afternoon, and it's filled off here as usual, busy, people going shopping and going out to eat and having a good time on this. How you doing? What's the name of your company? Uh, Handmade Jewelry. Okay. I'm a YouTuber. We got a lot of people around the world that watch me. And I like what you got going on here. Okay, enjoy your day. You too, thank you. Uh-huh. Yeah, as you see, I show people love that I don't know because they my people. It's wherever you know them or not. I like that that whole outfit. Look at that outfit right there. They got they got the side foot locker, they got the whole sixer short set. They got the whole Philly short set. What they got on their feet though? They got these new balance right there. And the night. I ain't gonna go in foot locker though. I don't feel like all that, but, but I will come through. Now this broad in Oxford, a few blocks away with that crazy shooting happened at on 13th in Oxford. The crazy thing about that. I had met my mom on 13th in Oxford like four or five days ago, four days ago. And she was like, son, won't you meet me on Broad and she should be more? No, 13th and she should be more. I said, mom, go to Broad and Oxford. It's closer to me, closer to where I'm at. And she's like, it used to be dangerous down there back in the day. You couldn't even stand on that corner back in the day. And, and I felt the vibe when I was over there. I was like, you know what? That's crazy how... Back in the day, you couldn't even stand on 13th of Oxford. They was gang on in the 50s and 60s, right? But when I was down there, I seen this one individual, young young man, young African-American man. He looked at me crazy, walking across the street real fast with his hoodie on. But, you know, I'm on point. I watch everything. And then, next thing you know, that incident happened. A shooting or whatever. But a little eight-year-old girl got grazed in the face, I think. But right here on Oxford and Carlisle, right here where this van is at, in front of the, the known nightclub called Barber's Hall. Now I'm in front of the, the Barber's Hall where we used to come through at nice be a gas station, or probably like an AM. PM Mini Mark right here with this movie theater at. And I think another parking lot gas station. I ain't really sure what was over there. It might have been a gas station. But my twin brother used to always tell me about this club when I was up Slayton Farm, Juvenile Placement. See, you got to come to Barber's Hall. So when he say Barber's Hall, I'm thinking talking about Temple. Temple, because Temple always got the word hall and back of their name, you know, we used to go to Temple and party all the time. But this was the known night spot in Philly. And back in June... Of 1990, me, Shorty Hawk, Moochie, and the, the whole city of Philadelphia had came. Well, they I met them up there because I, I was coming up there from the Northeast. And Celine, JBM, Lieutenant, ex Lieutenant, told me that everybody was going to be up here tonight because I believe AJ had just had a ceremony, got married or something. Aaron, Aaron Jones. So everybody came up. Here and it was at capacity. 
It was like the let out. I came up here, had a short set on. I mean, what I had on, I had some shorts, a Timberwolf NBA shirt on, and my green high top Gucci's. Now, a lot of stuff happened in '90. A lot happened in the summer of '90. But this particular night, when I ran into, you know, members of the JBM, you know, when you meet meet up with them and you associate associate with well. When you associate with them, they give you a hug with a handshake to represent, you know, or they just hug you to represent the JBM family. You know what I mean? JBM just barely making it. But on this particular day, that night rather, early in the wee hours in the morning, like three in the morning, we all out here. We all out standing around looking at anybody to somebody. And Shorty Hawk had leaned over right here on the driver's side of this car, this little small car, and he seen these females. You know, that's we up there for to talk to the females. And he had his handprint like right here. Like, you know, the, not your handprint, but like right here, the side where they fingerprint you at right here. And he leaned on the car to talk to the female. And it was like a shot that sounded like a firecracker. And everybody just started dispersing everywhere. And we got up, got up out of there. And I had went my own separate ways. I didn't, you know, come up to this Barber's Hall nightclub with them. I just met them all up there. So we all left. A year later, I see Shorty Hawk and C. Ray Hole with the Lango and all of them. My cousin Butterfelt and all of them in a hole. And I never had a chance to talk to him, to ask him. What was he booked for? You don't ask somebody what they locked up for. You just know they locked up. And they know you locked up. Years later, around about 2015, 2016, 2015, around 2015, he came home, Shorty Hawk. He called me. I made him a bro in Susquehanna. You know, he's around me a lot. You know, reminiscing, catching up on old times. And what happened was, what happened, he told me how he got locked up. I said, how you get locked up? We was on the cover that night. He said, man, because after, after, after that happened and everybody left, I went down Richard Island, got dropped off down there. And when I got dropped off down there, um, I seen, you know, Shorty Hawk talk to them down Richard Island hallway and, you know, after that, shook their hands or whatever. And I left and went home. Years later, I come to find out that they took the fingerprint off like a car, like, like it was an older model. It was a low, it was a car small like this, and he was leaning over to talk to the female. So I asked him how he got caught, and he was like, "The fingerprint, the fingerprint." You know what I mean? So he had the fingerprint, and now he had the fingerprint on there. He got locked up because he had a record. So that's why when the guy made the video, you know what I mean? These guys made the video talking about how Brian Mucci thought and, and Shorty Hawk. Watkins got locked up. They said they got locked up over some road rage. They didn't get locked up over no road rage. I guess because people were sitting in the car and somebody lost their life while sitting in the car, they assumed it was road rage. They come to find out the cop who made up all these allegations and took the arrest report and all that and went to the, I guess, the higher ups and told them they had a case that the cop who pursued this issue was a rookie cop and he was in the narcotics division. So why would he break his neck to try to solve a homicide? Well, let me tell you. Well, believe it or not, a lot of people was infatuated with the JBL. You know what I mean? And Moochie's brother, Bryant, Moochie Thornton brother, had introduced him at a at a party they was at to this individual police officer, you know what I mean, who's off duty, and you know, when you hear about people on the news, and the word mafia is associated with it, you had people wanting to be around, wanting to make their bones off of them, or whatever, and this how you know the guy was crooked, and everything about him, now we're on 15th and Oxford, we're going to walk up, is the reason why, is because certain people want to make impression on their superior officers, their superiors, period. So later on down the line, come to find out that this boy was a rotten cop 
who wound up losing his job for doing all type of BS. And, and when he did all that, he wound up being like a security guard or something like that for, for Temple. And the crazy thing is, years later, karma is a motherfucker because he did all that stuff to get people locked up and incarcerated. And then he wound up losing his job, his career, and everything. Now, as you see, these houses on Wollaton and Oxford is still standing where we used to be at. You know what I mean? And everything. And this is one of the spots we used to chill on, shoot dice on. And this is right around the corner from 17th and Jefferson. Like I told you, we used to be out here like this. So, bands though, Barbara's Hall is down the street from where we hang at. It's like, it's like, okay, we just walk down the street and go to the, in the nightclub. So I was always in good hands when I was in this neighborhood because I knew everybody. In this little four block radius on this side of Broad Street and on the other side of Broad Street. So I was around, man. Like I was really around. And like when I watch people videos and they mention the JBM and all that. And sometimes I laugh because I'm like, yeah, they got it all wrong. They wasn't even around. So when y'all hear people make content and they don't show you their face, like I can show you my face because y'all already know my channel. See? Y'all see me with the all Nike on. Put them on my feet. Put the all Nike sweatsuit on to come out here. Yeah you know I mean. We on 17th and Oxford and right up the street. Way up the street up there. Up here is 17th and Jefferson, which is at the corner. If you can see where that, that traffic light at, right up the street, that's 17th and Jefferson, you know? And this is a famous candy store that we used to always be in to play the arcades games in. Well, as I walk towards AC from Oxford, the mansion, you know, and as I walk up Jefferson Street, I'm on, I'm on well, I'm on Oxford Street. Jefferson Street is the next block over. But when I, as I walk up Oxford Street, it brings back so many memories of the 1980s and 1990s. But like I told y'all, you know, see how these big houses is? Some of these houses, and this a new house right there. This house right in between, but right next to it. Been there for years. As well as these, see how these houses built? That's how you can know that at one point, a lot of wealthy white people lived in North Philly. Well, a lot of things that happened over the years for this is the famous block right here, Bevere Street. Bevere and Oxford, Bevere and Jefferson. Chine lost his life on Bevere Street. And I think he lost his life on Bevere. And I think either Bevere and Oxford or Bevere and Cecil B. Moore, which is right down here when I was incarcerated. I mean, like when the guy made his video about 17 with Jefferson, he couldn't even pronounce this word right. You know what I mean? That's how you know these dudes don't be from around because they can't even pronounce the word Bevere. Like Paul Bevere, you know, back in the 1700s. But anyway, I made this video, you know, just as a bonus and just to let people know, man, if you ain't, if you wasn't around and you, you ain't got no family ties to certain stories or anything like that, then you ain't qualified to tell a story that you wasn't even around. Feel me? Somebody got them a nice truck called Famous Flavors. This is a water ice truck. You know what I mean? This is my man right here, Ed, that passed away. Ed, man, he rest in peace. Bundles, man, he rest in peace. Fat Mike, man, he rest in peace. You feel me? Lil Milk, man, he rest in peace. Lost a lot of soldiers in this neighborhood, man. This is the famous Mead School that a lot of people went to. Yeah, dog. What's up, bro? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, the hood love me, man. On some real shit. You just can't go in certain neighborhoods and people just show you that type of love and respect. You feel me? This we used to have all the, in this schoolyard on Grad Street. This is the famous Grad Street, but Grad's in, in Oxford, on the Grad's in Oxford, we used to have the famous dollar parties at on this playground right here. And walk down here so y'all can see the playground. We used to come through and had a, they had block, block parties and everything. But everybody 
used to come in this playground with the DJs and everything. But nowadays, the kids can't even play in these playgrounds. You know, a lot of North Philly playgrounds, kids can't go in because of the violence, the gun violence. But we used to come in this schoolyard, and it used to look gigantic when I was a young boy. Inside this schoolyard, back in the 80s, they used to have the dollar parties in there. They used to have the DJs and everything in here. You know what I mean? And they used to be here all day long and all night long. You know, feel me? So, when somebody make a video, they gotta have accuracy, they gotta be there, they gotta be from around there, they gotta know people. I understand people is making money off their content, but if you wanna make some content, get the facts. Stop voicing your opinion off of newspaper articles that the Delhi News made or the police put together. If you don't hear from nobody from the streets who was around, then don't believe, don't believe the hype. You feel me? And free the men. Free all the innocent men, man. Free Shorty Hawk Watkins. I mean, free Brian Mucci Thornton. Free all the men that's been incarcerated on false charges. They got all these crooked officers, ex-officers, that they come to find out that these boys is crooks, liars, thieves, and was doing anything to get people locked up. From what I said here, there's a big conspiracy of why they locked everybody up. They locked everybody up just so they can be how the world is right now. Let me tell y'all something that y'all don't know. It's eight to seven billion people in the world and they're trying to say we overpopulated, but that's false. It's just that people are packed in certain cities. They just packed up in there. But if you could take these seven billion or seven or eight billion people and put them in Texas, they will have room to live. You know, we are not overpopulated. But what they're doing is they want the population to get down to 500 million. That's what they want. So they can have space, so they can have room to do things. But they got us thinking that the world's overpopulated, but it ain't. I traveled a lot. I traveled, I went to eight cities. And it wasn't overpopulated to me. But they said the way they control the population is through mass destructions, um, wars, and diseases and viruses and as you know the pandemic you know the war against Ukraine and Russia and all this madness in the world is decreasing the population so don't be fooled by lies you know because if the world's overpopulated you'd be bumping into people awful lot but as you see a lot of people really don't even come outside so how can the censors say that we are overpopulated you know who controls the media and all that? It's 20 banks. It's 20 banks that you put your money in. The bank is 20 known banks that run 147, 147 major companies. Is ran by these 20 banks that's behind the scene that control the media, that control the narrative, everything. So if you don't see something on the news, that's only because they don't allow it on the news. That being said... Y'all stay woke. Y'all stay blessed. Fully trenches, fully trenches, fully trenches.